In the wake of World War II, as the Cold War cast a shadow over global security, Australia sought to modernize its air force to meet the challenges of a rapidly changing world. The Royal Australian Air Force found its answer in the de Havilland Vampire, a British-designed jet fighter that marked Australia's bold entry into the jet age. Introduced in 1948, the Vampire was the RAF's first operational jet aircraft, a symbol of technological progress and a critical step in transitioning from piston engine fighters to high-speed jet aviation. Built under license in Australia by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, CAC, and de Havilland Australia, the Vampire served as both a fighter and a trainer, playing a pivotal role in shaping the RAF's capabilities during the early Cold War. While it never saw combat, the Vampire's contributions to pilot training, industrial development, and national pride left an indelible mark on Australian aviation history. The Vampire's journey in Australia began in the late 1940s, as the Royal Australian Air Force sought to replace aging piston engine aircraft like the P-51 Mustang with a jet capable of meeting emerging regional threats. The de Havilland Vampire, designed in Britain during World War II, was an ideal choice for a mid-sized air force like Australia's. Its first flight in 1943 had proven its reliability, and its relatively simple design made it suitable for local production. Australia ordered two variants, the single-seat Vampire F-30 fighter and the two-seat T-35 trainer. Between 1948 and the 1950s, CAC and de Havilland Australia produced 80 F-30s and 29 T-35s, with a small number of British-built FB-9 variants imported for evaluation. A key modification was the use of the CAC-built Rolls-Royce Neen turbojet engine, which delivered approximately 5,000 pounds of thrust, more powerful than the British Goblin engine, but at the cost of higher fuel consumption, slightly reducing the aircraft's range. The Vampire F-30 could reach speeds of 548 miles per hour, or 882 kilometers per hour, climb to 42,000 feet, and carry four 20mm Hispano cannons, along with up to 2,000 pounds of bombs or rockets. The T-35, with its side-by-side -side seating for instructor and student, was unarmed but shared similar performance, making it an excellent platform for, for jet training. Operationally, the Vampire served the Royal Australian Air Force in multiple roles, though it never saw combat. As a fighter, the F-30 equipped squadrons such as number 21, 22, 23, 25, and 75, providing air defense and ground attack capabilities during a period of regional tensions, including the Malayan emergency and Indonesian confrontation. Stationed at bases across New South Wales, Victoria, and Western Australia, the Vampire bolstered Australia's deterrence posture in the Asia-Pacific. However, by the mid-1950s, its subsonic speed and lack of advanced avionics rendered it obsolete against newer jets like the Soviet MiG-15 or the Royal Australian Air Force's own CAC Sabre, leading to its phase-out from frontline service by the late 1950s. The T-35 trainer, however, remained in service until 1970, playing a crucial role at training units like No. 1 Advanced Flying Training School at RF Base Pierce. Its side-by-side -side seating facilitated effective instruction, preparing pilots for advanced jets like the Mirage 3 and F-111. Beyond its military roles, the Vampire captivated the Australian public through aerobatic displays, with teams like No. 21 Squadrons, Meteorites showcasing its agility at air shows, symbolizing the Royal Australian Air Force's modernization and boosting national pride. The Vampire's legacy in Australia is best understood through its contributions to technology, training, industry, and culture. As the RIF's first jet, it was a technological pioneer, introducing pilots and ground crews to the complexities of jet propulsion, high speed flight, and maintenance. This experience was invaluable, smoothing the transition to more advanced aircraft and ensuring the RF remained competitive during the early Cold War. The T-35 trainer in particular left a lasting impact by training hundreds of pilots, 
many of whom went on to fly in later conflicts like the Vietnam War. Its reliability and ease of use made it a beloved platform, with pilots often recalling their first jet flights in the Vampire with fondness. Industrially, the local production of 109 Vampires by CAC and de Havilland Australia strengthened Australia's aerospace sector, providing jobs, technical expertise, and infrastructure that supported subsequent projects. The construction of 109 aircraft, 80 F-30 fighters, and 29 T-35 trainers by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation and de Havilland Australia not only bolstered the RF's capabilities but also fostered technical expertise, created jobs, and established infrastructure that would support future projects like the CAC Sabre and Mirage 3. This industrial effort enhanced Australia's self-reliance in defense manufacturing, a critical goal during the Cold War when supply chains could be disrupted by global tensions. The successful integration of the Rolls-Royce Neen engine, a more powerful but fuel-hungry alternative to the British Goblin engine, showcased Australian engineering prowess. Although Australia later shifted toward importing off-the-shelf aircraft like the FA-18 Hornet, the Vampire program laid a foundation for domestic aerospace capabilities, proving that Australia could produce sophisticated jet aircraft to meet its defense needs. Culturally, the Vampire was more than a military asset. It was a symbol of Australia's entry into the modern era of aviation. Its sleek design, distinctive twin boom tail, and the roar of its jet engine captured the public's sexual imagination during air shows organized by the RAF and civilian groups. The aircraft's aerobatic performances, particularly by Numbrilla, 21 squadrons, meteorites, thrilled crowds, and boosted recruitment by showcasing the RAF's technological advancements. The Vampire's visibility at these events helped cement its image as a cutting-edge machine in the public's mind, fostering a sense of national pride in Australia's growing military aviation capabilities. Despite its contributions, the Vampire faced challenges that limited its combat legacy. Its wooden composite fuselage, while lightweight, was less durable in Australia's harsh climate, and the Neen engine's high fuel consumption posed logistical issues. The aircraft's subsonic speed and lack of advanced radar or avionics meant it was quickly outclassed by newer jets like the MiG-15 and CA Sabre, which replaced it in frontline service by the late 1950s. Additionally, its lack of combat experience in Australian service, unlike the Gloucester Meteor, which saw action in Korea, meant its operational impact was less storied than other Cold War aircraft like the English Electric Canberra or the General Dynamics F-111. Nevertheless, the Vampire's role as a reliable interim platform during a critical modernization phase ensured its place in RAF history as a bridge to more advanced systems. The legacy of the de Havilland Vampire in Australia is one of transition, training, and transformation. It introduced jet technology to the RF, preparing pilots and crews for the challenges of high-speed flight and jet engine maintenance.